In the news this week, Liz Truss resigns as Prime Minister after just 45 days in office. MPs back abortion censorship zones in England and Wales. And the Scottish Government is under fire for ignoring public opposition to plans to make legal sex changes easier. Hello. Liz Truss has resigned as Prime Minister after just 45 days in office. While in office, the embattled PM had taken steps to protect free speech by shelving the controversial Bill of Rights and promising to make sure the online safety bill reflected her belief that free speech should be the same online as offline. The Bill of Rights could have made landmark court judgments such as those on Asher's Baking Company and Name Person harder to achieve in the future, while the online safety bill creates strong incentives for tech companies to restrict content which is legal but deemed harmful to adults. The Institute has been warning that this could lead to the suppression of Christian views being shared online. A leadership election is expected to be completed within a week and Institute Director Colin Hart has asked supporters to pray that the current political turmoil will not be exploited by those seeking to bring in bad laws. MPs have given their backing to the introduction of censorship zones around abortion clinics in England and Wales. Stella Creasy's amendment to the Public Order Bill outlaws prayer and offers of help to women outside clinics, but was accepted by 297 votes to 110. Some councils have already introduced such zones where praying audibly and reciting scripture are prohibited. The new rules could also make it legal for people living in the zones or churches based there to display pro-life posters or adverts anywhere they might be seen from the street. Anyone found guilty of breaching the rules could face six months in prison. Several MPs spoke out powerfully against the censorship plans. Mr Deputy Speaker, the police already have the tools they need to protect women. There is no evidence of the scale of harassment that the Honourable Lady and indeed some in this House have referred to today. Therefore, I repeat, this amendment is not necessary. It would risk unintended consequences for freedom of speech and freedom of expression and it would be bad for women. The wording of New Clause 11 could even catch those quietly praying. But when did it become against the law in this country to pray? Well, unfortunately, five councils have now defined protest as including the word prayer. Indeed, during the course of court proceedings, this has even been confirmed as including silent prayer. This is a very grave development which we in this House, more than anyone, must stand against. It would mean, effectively and staggeringly, criminalising the affairs going on within the privacy of an individual's mind. So this, I'm afraid, Mr Speaker, is not primarily a debate about abortion. We all have our views on that. This is a debate and an amendment about public order. And a thorough review of this subject, including the public order aspect, found that buffer zones would be an excessive response to protests of, of vigils outside abortion clinics. There's no need to change the law with this amendment. The Scottish Government is under fire for pushing ahead with plans to allow people to choose their own legal sex, as new polling shows the scale of public opposition. Of the 1,018 voters in Scotland surveyed by Panelbase, 62% oppose lowering the minimum age for changing legal sex to 16, with only 19% in favour. And the plan to reduce the two-year waiting period to three months was backed by just one in four. Writing for the Sunday Times Scotland, J.K. Rowling warned, If any woman or girl suffers voyeurism, sexual harassment, assault or rape, in consequence of the Scottish Government's lax new rules, the blame will rest squarely with those at Holyrood who ignored safeguarding experts and women's campaigners. And finally, a document for councils which labelled phrases like ladies and gentlemen as inappropriate has been withdrawn amid a storm of protest. In the name of equality and diversity, the Local Government Association's Inclusive Language Guide also urged councils to replace the words father and mother with birthing parent, claiming men also experience pregnancy and give birth. The Mayor of Basildon called it absurd to suggest the words mother and father can be offensive. 
Within days, the document was withdrawn and the LGA's website stated, we're reviewing our inclusive language guide following feedback from our members. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.